everyone. Welcome to GT Time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones and Daniel Bloodworth. <laughs> And in the super seat this week, Ben Moore. Hello. Hey, Ben. Hey, Kyle. Uh, the rotating question for the super seat on this rotation is for you to tell us about the last time you had a great idea. So I've put a lot of thought into this. Okay. And my idea is not as clever or humorous as Nopra from Elise mm -hmm. Willis. Hard to beat Nopra. Yeah, it is really hard to beat. <laughs> but I, I thought I would give a recommendation, something I started watching that I think is actually incredible uh, and not game related. Uh, on Netflix, there's a series called Black Mirror. And it's, it's sort of a modern day Twilight Zone that is very satirical, supremely well written, and just devastating. Like every single episode that I watch, it's, it's the kind of show where I take a step back and I think about it for like an hour, just sitting there. It's that intense, it's that crazy. Um, and I think people should check it out. It's, it's one of the coolest shows I've seen in a long time. So to clarify this, uh, your great idea was either to watch it or your great idea is to recommend it. My, my great idea <laughs> is... I don't have a lot of time. Sure. And so my great idea was, I'm going to give this a shot. Because okay. each episode is an hour long. Mm -hmm. And I took a chance because my free time is very valuable to me. Oh, to and all of us, yes. it paid off in spades. I had no idea what to expect going into the show. The man constantly playing Hearthstone. Free time. Very valuable. <laughs> Hearthstone is important. Wow. Well, that, <laughs> that, that was a burn right there. <laughs> Not on this show. I and will not I, forgive people saying video games are a waste of time on this show. I will not allow it. Just certain video games. Game Trailer's Game of the Year 2014. Yeah. Waste of time. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> Hearthstone had its shot. Let's move on. So while we're correcting each other, let's get into our official corrections. Begin correction music, please. Uh, Maxis didn't make Sim Tower. So we, last week we were naming off a bunch of games we thought Maxis made. Uh, Sim Tower was actually made by Open Book, uh, directed by Yut Saito. Uh, who also made Odama and Seaman. Yeah, there's another thing that I, I knew that just didn't catch my eye when we, when we said it. Okay, so you knew... All right, do you know what the subtitle of Sim Tower is? Nah. Has anyone ever played Odama? But I think it, like, that game seems I bet Blood crazy. played Odama. Uh, I played it at E3, but I didn't ever play it when that it came out. That was that pinball samurai game? Yeah, it was right? crazy. Yeah, okay. Like, uh, there's armies, and you're just smashing the armies with your giant pinball. I feel like a game... Such as Odama would not get made today. Oh no, 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 no. Why not? Well, it'd be an yeah. indie game. It would be a small indie game. Yeah, cool. yeah, but I, I don't think Nintendo would be putting out Odama. Right. Uh, the Vertical Empire, by the way. Sim Tower, the Vertical Empire. Huh. So there you have it. Uh, HTC's VR headset is pronounced Vive. Okay. That just aggravates me when that's said. Did we yeah. what? How do we pronounce it? Vive. V O V. -I okay. Yeah, I don't like right. either of those. Vive. V. Vita, Vive, I think all the V words are they're done. No more left. Uh, track IR. So the track IR is a really cool thing you can put on your monitor, and it actually tracks your head. And so we were talking about how in a lot of first-person shooters, you can't uh, have your body, your gun facing one way and look the other. Uh, it turns out with track IR, in games like Arma, you can do that. Even without track IR, actually, you can hold down a button in, in Arma and look around still. Mm -hmm. So we have that capability without VR headsets, is what we learned from the comments. Uh, Delcast had a cool comment in regards to Bloodworth's thought about a lot of engines becoming free. Uh, he said that basically going free was the only option for Source and Unreal. Like, they're getting so stomped right now. I guess Unity's where it's at. All yeah. developers love Unity. Uh, or in the Blind Forest is on Unity. Yeah, and Unity's, like, its free version is apparently great right now. Can, can I pose a question? Please. I feel as though id spent so much time and so much money on id tech, and no one uses it mm -hmm. outside of id and Bethesda. Right. Why? <laughs> Is it just not as good? I think it's just tricky. Did they, I... did they have it set up for licensing as much stuff? Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'm pretty positive you can license id tech. And I think something like Unity, where you can just port it easily across many platforms, I think that's just so appealing and how easy it is. Right. And also uh, how many assets you can buy for it. Just it has a really cool asset store mm. as opposed to the other places. So it's just like stomping right now. Random, random, very quick aside. Okay. It blew me away. The correction music is still playing this whole time. <laughs> it blew me away that Guilty Gear XR was made in Unreal Engine. Yeah, that's Because crazy. I feel like there was a period of time where every Unreal Engine looked the same, and I never would have thought something like Guilty Gear would be made using that engine. Absolutely. And corrections music. Ooh. Sorry. 
<laughs> Never apologize for that. Um, let's get into game news. Everyone knows how I love to start an episode of GT Time. We have ourselves a game announcement. <laughs> and it's Pokemon related. It's not Pokemon related at all. <laughs> it no, is no. Pokemon related. It's well, absolutely Pokemon there's related. There's nothing. There's no Pokemon. The game is called Tembo the Badass Elephant. The point is that it is not Pokemon related. What is this game? It's from Game Freak, who frequently develops Pokemon games. Uh, this is... <laughs> It's a 2D side scroller in which you're an elephant. You are a badass elephant. It's coming to Xbox One, PS4, PC. Nothing Nintendo owns. Which and is Sega pretty is crazy. publishing. Sega is publishing. And this is the first time Game Freak has made a game that hasn't appeared on a Nintendo console since 1999. Oh, hold on, I have the game's name. C Click Medic. So I don't know what that is. Click Medic? Nope, don't know it. Yeah, I don't know either. It's a PlayStation game. I remember uh, Drill Dozer. Yep, but I mean that was on Game Boy Advance. Yeah, that is like one of the few times that they've made a non-Pokemon game. Right. Like, recently. Yeah. That wasn't even recently, really. Well, uh, so they made Harmonite last year. Yeah. And apparently a, a, an, a mobile game about like horse racing that also appeared on the 3DS. So this is the first time they're just like, hey, Nintendo, you don't get any of this. <laughs> so that's what's pretty crazy. That's what's pretty crazy that Game Freak is up to, published by Sega. Is anyone else shocked by this? I'm not shocked, but some of the comments they made were they really like the old mascot platformers of the day, things like Sonic and Mario. And, you know, Game Freak hasn't made a bad game in a long time. Mostly they've been making Pokemon. And it's, it's, it's cool. I like those. I grew up with those mascot platformers, so I'll definitely check it out. But something that's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine is when you have badass in the title. Whoa. I get that... There's a certain vibe that they're going for, but I just feel like that's so on the nose. You know what I mean? Like, if you have to tell me your character is badass, I instantly don't think he's badass. Like, let him speak for himself. If he's badass, show me cool stuff that he's doing. Don't say, he's a badass elephant. I don't know. Very true. I think uh, I'd have a bigger problem with it if it was, like, a cool game. <laughs> if it was, like, Marcus Phoenix, the bad guy, the badass shooter gun guy. You know what sure. I mean? Uh, but this is a badass elephant. This is a 2D cartoony I, I, game. I do like to play against elephant. Like, you don't normally right. associate elephants with being badass. Like, you'd think right. a, a badass would be like a dog or like, you know, like a, uh, a yeti or so, you know, something that's like aggressive and, you know, tell you, something you could easily put like sunglasses on and you, you wouldn't think about it. But like elephant, I get, and maybe that's the play that they're just like, not just an elephant. It's a badass elephant. You're never going to fit a pair of shades on an elephant. As if to suggest all other elephants aren't badass. This is kind of like the one of the herd that stands out. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that's, them. well, that's the interesting thing because, you know, elephants and hippos, like, they, they kill more people than <laughs> real predators every year. But people think of them as, you know, cute, cuddly little things. Elephants kill a lot of people? Hippos certainly do. Absolutely. Hippos are nasty. Yeah, absolutely. Elephants will rip people in half. Cool. <laughs> There's something Bad about ass. when you're actually in Africa seeing elephants, it's a little intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry, Blood. Have you been in Africa? Yeah. Watching, seeing elephants. What? Yes. Did you, did you see an elephant kill a person? No. Okay. But the ranger, you know, like our, our, you know, our our guys were like prodding the ranger for like all the horror stories. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So. And when the ranger was Africa? affected. Huh. The ranger was like visibly affected. I don't know if he's visibly effective, but he was just telling people, like, no, this is for real kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like this stuff happens. Just pay attention to me. Listen to what I say. <laughs> don't, don't go running off in the field like the dancers in our group did chasing zebra or something like that. Yeah, that was not a smart move. And dancers, by the way, we don't need to we don't need to inquire about that. <laughs> how he knew they were dancers or what? No, I mean, they were with us. To the story. <laughs> we had a dance team. We had a film team. Oh, so wait, which oh, okay. team are you on? I was on the film team. OK. Why? What film were you making? Uh, we made like a like a little mini documentary on uh, like uh, elephant murder. No, not <laughs> elephant murder. Um, it was. I'm trying to now. I can't think of the word for it. Um, Poaching? No, <laughs> we weren't there. We weren't there for the safari. Safari was like an extra thing we did. Uh, but it was like a community center type type thing that we did a documentary on that they then were able to use for um, fundraising. Okay. 
Now I just want to do a series called The Chronicles of Bloodworth. I know. <laughs> and every week, you just get Bloodworth a hint. <laughs> tells us about dancers in Africa. <laughs> but I also like how when he mentioned the dance team, it was almost like you need a dance team for a safari. Yeah. Like they can't, like the safari <laughs> group is like in the Jeep ready to go. They're like, do we, do we have the dancers? Okay, we're good. No, okay, they're, we're chasing, now they're chasing the zebras. Oh, you dancers. <laughs> Oh, you damn dancers, but it, but it was, here. but it was like there was that that sense of like in the one jeep we had the film team and they were like quiet and observant, and the other t- jeep you had the dance team and they were loud and <laughs> which just goes to show. I've been saying this about dancers <laughs> all the whole time, you know, compared to film people. Like film people, you can you can count on them to be calm and reserved oh, yeah. and obey the rules, but dancers, man, Ugh. no, no, no. You don't want to hear about the dancing problems I've been having. <laughs> Rebels by nature. Um, so there are other, two other interesting things about this game. Uh, firstly. Uh, the director of this game and character designer is James Turner. That is, uh, uh, you know, a Western-sounding name. This guy uh, was the first Westerner to ever join Game Freak and create Pokemon. That happened in X and Y. Came in in 2010. The first person outside of Japan, outside of the East, able to design Pokemon. And now he gets to make his own game for Game Freak. I think that's pretty cool. Designing Pokemon meaning literally like the characters themselves. Yeah. Like actually like conceiving of naming. And so he gets a lot of hate. He made uh, the ice cream cone. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he also made Golurk, which is just sick. Uh, and uh, Vol- Volibeat? Uh, the Vulture one. Okay. Sick. So he's like, he's like, you know, he's like two for three. You know, this this kind of gives me, Temo kind of gives me hope in a weird way. Go on. Because we heard that depressing news not that long ago that Sega was like, yeah, we're pretty much going to focus on mobile and things aren't doing so hot right now. Yeah. Temo the Badass Elephant reminds me of the Sega of yore, where they would put out really bizarre games that have crazy, quirky premises that no one else was making, and they're like, here you go. You know? like This, this, this reminds me of Genesis. C- yeah, yeah. This reminds me of Seaman or... Something crazy like that. Yeah. I think that's cool, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's coming out on Steam and Xbox and PS4. Keep doing this stuff. And here's a, this kind of ties in. Here's the other interesting thing about this. Game Freak has a thing like Google where people on their free time are allowed to just, they get like a certain chunk of free time at the office, work on whatever you want. This was James Turner's work on whatever you want. Nice. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, I think that's a similar story to how we got Grow Home. Yeah, that you is know, exactly that. It's like that. eight yeah. guys within Ubisoft Reflections and like started messing with something and then they're like, hey, that's pretty good. Let's actually put it on the Steam store. And then it's a good game. <laughs> and these are where the good games come from. Yeah. Yeah, I can see a lot of people at Ubisoft being like, oh, my, my free time's over. Back to Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, is kind of Reflections is helping on Division. Oh, interesting. So, but I mean, they're they're going to be in crunch from now for till forever till the the division is out. Yeah. Because that's my question. Actually, is like, how many? Like, do you think other studios could afford to just let people have twenty percent of their time at work be free time? I, I mean, it's a risk. No, ma- you know, no matter what, it's yeah. like Google kind of operates that way, where they're just like, hey, you guys, just you know, do whatever you want. Go around the, the table and just come up with creative ideas. Yeah, Gmail was one of those ideas, though. How crazy and it's is that? T- and yeah. they've had, you know, there's all sorts of ideas that they've rolled out that were totally free, and then like a year later, they're like, okay, we're done. You know, and it's just like, what's well, so weird? This is some crazy experiment that like didn't cost us anything, and of course, people complain about. But um, uh, yeah, it's you're not going to make money instantly off that idea. Like that's not something that you can put into a budget and at the end of that year you'll see a return on that investment of giving those people that time. But it's just something that if, if it's generally known that that's how your 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 business practices, then uh, there's something to be said for having your employees like working for you. You know, like <laughs> so many people, probably more, probably like 60% of anyone who has any job in the world like is not super excited to get up in the morning and go to their job. And so I like, bet it's more than 60%. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually started at half and then was like, no, I'll probably bump that number up, but it's uh, depressingly probably a lot higher than that. And so, and especially in a creative industry, you know, it's like it's Assassin's Creed is a great example. And it, and I say that loving those Assassin's Creed games and mm-hmm. not seeing anything wrong with, you know, getting one of those. Like I think they're I think there should be franchises that should, it's okay if we get a new one every year because there is a way to do that if you shuffle it around between different studios. Yeah, wasn't there, but, um, in, in Andrea's previous thing, wasn't there somebody who basically spent the majority of that development time just like making the Notre Dame? Yeah, a whole year. Yeah. One, one gal, a whole year, just Notre Dame, that was it. 
Which again, that was and that was one of those things that like the whole time people were talking about everything that was wrong with with <laughs> Unity, like nobody was talking about like nobody's like, can we just for a second take five minutes and just walk through this thing and look at it? Yeah, and say that this is an amazing accomplishment. You know, do you go there multiple times in the game? Oh yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, you keep returning to it. Great. Um, and they, I mean, the first demo that they showed off, first time I got to see Unity, they were just like, and let's go to Notre Dame. <laughs> sure. Let's show this thing off. Yeah, that was definitely like a a major point of that. But I just think it's yeah, there's something to be said for having people realize that like. I, and it's not something that like, I feel, you know, uh, oh, I gotta do something cool, like, oh, Tenbo's gotta be amazing. It's like, I can actually put my creative ideas in and actually make this something that I, you know, that I believe in. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's not like you feel stressed out to, to make an amazing idea. It's like, when you actually care about something, when you're actually doing something for fun, that's when, you know, people gravitate towards it. That's when people are like, yeah, that is, that is the game I want. But you didn't really know it. It's not like te how do you sell Tembo? You know what I mean? How do you like you put that ass in the title? How do you right? <laughs> but how do you pitch that? You know, it's like that's not the kind of game you could go in and really sell. And it's like okay, no, we're yeah. clearly gonna invest in that. Yeah. But if you just make it and then you sit down and actually play it, like that's the sell. Same with Grow Home. Abs that's a, such a hard pitch. Yeah. Absolutely. So you just you got to make it first. It's one of those games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's already you know like thankfully it didn't have all that much marketing for people to poke fun at it before because. You know, I've seen a few of those comments where it's like, oh, it's Ubisoft's tower, the game. You know, like the whole game is the towers. <laughs> we officially like towers on this podcast. Love towers. Yeah. Uh, let's get to news. Uh, big news this week is bad news. Uncharted 4 has been delayed until spring of 2016. Uh, more than a year from now. Yeah. Maybe probably about a year. It'll probably do March. It'll probably be March 2016. Uh, so that uh, that happened, everybody. Uh, did you see that coming? No, actually, I thought that they would be ready on that a little sooner. Ben, did you see this coming? No, I didn't see it coming. I would say, but I, I'm of the belief that however long it takes to make that game what it needs to be, take that time. You know, I feel like Naughty Dog has earned a position where they're afforded that luxury and they don't have to put a game out before it's ready. So, so why rush it, you know? So the reason, the answer for why rush it would be their Sony bosses saying, oh, we really, hold on, we need this. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I do want to talk about that. Brandon, I want to talk about Sony's fall, which has, at this Sony's point. Sony's fall as in the season. The not fall like of Sony's Sony. Sony's taking a dip right now, right. You're going downhill. You're <laughs> number two now, Sony. Oh, it's um, over. The gen was fun, but it's over. <laughs> uh, let's talk about its autumn. Uh, what is going to happen? What do they have now? Are well, they mean, going to announce games at E3? E, well, yeah, E3's coming up, so that might be it, that they kind of like are finally locking down everything that they're going to be announcing at E3, and they're like, okay, we can, we can maybe take this hit. Yeah, I think it's a little bit preemptive to worry, because I, I, you know, if E3 comes and goes, and we're like, oh, man, there's not that much coming out that fall, then let's be worried. But I also think you know, Metal Gear Solid Five is coming out in September. Mm -hmm. Batman's coming out in November. There's going to be stuff to play. I'm not that worried about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at what this fall was, uh, again, almost nothing. There was like Little Big Planet and Drive Club this right. fall. Did right. you say Batman's coming out in November? Or is it not November? I'm sorry. June. June. You just give me I'm a heart attack, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a delay I couldn't take. No. I'm no, sorry. No, not one more delay on that game. Not completely, this one. completely no, not incorrect this one. on that. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't surprised uh, because. Or it didn't really like impact me a lot because we haven't really seen a lot from Uncharted. And what we've seen is like clearly the opening of the game, right? I mean, like that's like the first thing you yeah. do is you wake up on that beach. And we've seen more of Uncharted than we have seen Halo 5. You know what I mean? That's not true. We had a beta for Halo 5. A multiplayer beta. Yeah. You're right, though. That we've, is a game. We've played yeah. Halo 5. I okay. Mean, like, uh, and, and, and granted, the multiplayer is probably the most important thing. We've seen uh, more of Uncharted than we've seen in the new Call of Duty, though. You know what I mean? And, and the new Assassin's Creed that we'll have this fall. But We've Call of Duty is like an institution where Uncharted, <laughs> Uncharted, you really taught, like Call of Duty, you don't really, at this point, you know, point your finger at one specific developer for Call of Duty, whereas like, this is Naughty Dog's baby. Yeah, you know, this is like, like after they make Uncharted and move on to whatever project is next, what they did with Uncharted 4 is going to suggest what they're going to do. The quality of that game is going to clue people's minds into the, what, what they're capable of doing on the PlayStation 4 or just in the next gen on these new consoles. And so they're like, we, we don't want to mess this up. You know, we don't want you to think that like something weird happened with the team. And so that's the thing is like, if we, I think if we had seen more of Uncharted and then got this announcement, we'd be worried like, whoa, something's happening, something's going wrong. But if it's so early in development, and we haven't, you know, there's still so much of this game that we haven't seen. 
Um, and, you know, granted, like, the world was beautiful, but there was nothing, like, really bizarre. I think, like, seeing the desert in Uncharted 3 was like, oh, wow, what a weird environment. Whereas, like, seeing, you know, Drake in a jungle is like, okay, it's Uncharted, here we go. You know, it's kind of like, not more of the same, but, you know, typical of what we've seen so far of the franchise. So if, we, if it was kind of darting in all these different creative directions, and then we got this huge delay, then you get the sense, like, uh-oh, something happened. You know, they, they're clearly, like, really far along, and then now they're diverting. Whereas, like, I think it's kind of cool that they are haven't released a lot yet or kind of looking at the you know the huge arc of their development time and are realizing yeah this is like just like the, what they said they're like this is bigger than we thought it was going to be yeah and that's great i mean that's always what you want to hear and to be fair uh weird stuff did happen on the team you know it, it lost its director and lead writer uh <laughs> pretty close to be like the, the the project was in production at that point you know so they did have to restart it yeah well it's interesting because they went out of their way to say that that wouldn't affect <laughs> Uh, the game, but and I've, now I think it, it clearly it We clearly knew better has. at the time, yeah. 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 I, man, thinking about it, Uncharted 4 is in such a strange position because it can't do too much of either way. If it's, if it's very much in the vein of Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 2, it'll still be good, but people will be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And if it's too dark and too depressing, people are going to be disappointed. So it has to tread this very fine line between being familiar and being completely different. And I don't know exactly how they do that. I think it's going dark. I think they're going hard on the other side. Do you think people will be disappointed by that? No. I think that... I think that... The, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. I think that the fan base for The Last of Us is bigger than the fan base for Uncharted. And I think that the people who played The Last of Us are going to want to play Uncharted 4 and see what Naughty Dog's working on next. But I don't want Uncharted to become The Last of Us. Like yeah. Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 have very serious moments, but mm -hmm. the reason I like that series so much is because Nathan Drake is so charismatic, is because he's able to crack jokes in the middle of a fight. Like There's something to that that I think is so vital to the franchise that if that gets drowned out, I'll be bummed out. The way Uncharted 2 ends with, uh, what's the blonde woman's name? It's Drake and the blonde woman. They're just <laughs> staring off at the mountains, and they're like cracking oh, jokes gosh. at each other after this whole adventure they had. Right. I was like, this is really, this is a, that was a video game. Right. That was a good game. Yeah. And I really do. I love it for its levity. I, I, I do like Uncharted I, for those We're, we're going to get so much crap for not remembering this. I'm like, I want to <laughs> say Ellie, and I'm like, oh, that's not Ellie. <laughs> When you play Lisa? video games every day right. for your job, you'd be am amazed at the things you forget. You sure. Know? Yeah. It's like there's only so much space in your brain. It's, it's crazy. It's also called a thief's end. They know what they're doing. You know, they, they know what they, they're they doing. They call it that for a reason. You yeah. Know, they, I mean, that, that, that teaser that they first suggested was like, something's going to happen. You know, and like, and we don't really know. Like, when they say a thief, are, like, are they referring to Drake? Like, is he a thief, I guess? You know, it's like, um, so yeah. So he's, either he's ending his career, either he's, or he's going to die, or they're referring to someone else. And so there's something that we don't know. There's some story element um, that they're saying. Uh a post Last of Us Naughty Dog world is very, very interesting. You know, I, yeah. in some ways, I think it's harder to go from Last of Us back to Uncharted than it is to go from Uncharted to Last of Us. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, because the expectations that Last of Us sets maybe don't necessarily fit Uncharted. You know what I mean? So I'm very interested to see it. It, it will probably be the most ambitious Uncharted game, for sure. And I like mm -hmm. that that you say that, Ben, because I do feel like the demo we saw was not the most ambitious Uncharted. No. No. Yeah. Elena. Nice. Blood, you saved us! <laughs> Everyone who typed in the comment is so bummed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had him. Blood, great pull, man. You know... <laughs> that was pro. What weirdly bums me out when I see a new game trailer hmm. is when I'm like... This looks like more of the same, but really good looking. I, I just get this weird, empty, flat feeling. I'm not excited. It's just, yeah, I know I'll play it, and it will look really pretty. Can but you give us a recent example of this? Uncharted 4. Oh, okay. Like, I, I think it will be a very, very good game. Yeah. But when I saw that demo, I was just like, yeah, this is a newer version of what I played last generation, and that's not a bad thing. I'm, it's not a slight against the game, but it didn't, 
it didn't make me jump up. It didn't make me excited. You know, when I when you see The Last of Us, mm -hmm. you know that that first trailer, you're like, whoa, right? What is going to happen? This is unfamiliar to me, and you're intrigued. Whereas, you know, there's there's this familiarity with Uncharted. I think that's a smart play with next gen, though. You know, yeah. that that's kind of like the concrete that they're laying down. It's like, okay, this is us taking the experience that you know and moving it into a new generation and then right. putting the little tease at the end with a new character, you know, a new family tie, you know, and suggesting like, okay, now where do we go from here? Now now they're going off into some place, you have a big wide shot pulling back. It's like, okay, now you can see the island you can see or this you know, this peninsula or whatever, like this environment that you're going to be exploring for the first part, if not all of the whole game. So I think it's smart, you know, like, because that's a big question, uh, um, you know, moving into next gen is like that first trailer. It's like, okay, what are you messing with it or what are you doing? And so I think if they did something really bizarre, like that people get really nervous. They're like, oh no, they're, this, this is the new weird Uncharted we're going to get for new gen. Whereas like, they're like, no, 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 it's the, it's, it's the same thing you love, although there's, there's questions that we'll answer down the road. So yeah, for me, it was a smart play. So uh, I was having a weird conversation with some friends about trailers. Like if you're making a sequel, it was about movies, but it's relevant. You gotta just make something that people will tweet about. So we're talking about, we're talking about a new Back to the Future movie. And here's how the trailer opens. It's completely dark. And then you see Doc Brown, and then we pan out and he's a spider monster. <laughs> What? Okay. Cut to black, Back to the Future 4. That would get tweets. And so I think like Uncharted 4 would need something like that. It's got to have Doc Brown as a spider. What? So you don't, so you don't like the debut of Uncharted 4? You didn't think that gameplay demo was good? I, I, I think it was good. It was G-O-O-D. I just think it... I think Naughty Dog wants us to be shouting and sweating about it. You know, they want us to be going wild, and, you know, we aren't. I don't get that vibe. I think I think they were trying to prove that they can do what they did before on new hardware, mm -hmm. and that that trailer that you're talking about, that weird like story thing. Uh, I think I think that's coming. I think that's basically going to be the next trailer that we get. Kay. It's like I, ah, that's the story. Okay. I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, because you know people know how crazy I am about the series. But that Persona Five trailer, right? When I watched it, I wasn't just like. Oh yeah, it's Persona 4, but it looks better on next gen. It had a completely different vibe. Mm -hmm. The style of it, the look of it, the, the way it seemed like it played was completely different. Yet this is the fifth entry in the series. But yeah, but the major difference is every Persona is a new story. Where this is a, this right. is a continuation of this character. That's true. So if true. you see Nathan, it's like, what? How does this tie yeah. into 3 at all? You know, yeah, if, like, we had, if we had the, uh, the Wind Waker version of Uncharted, it would definitely get people yeah. talking, but I don't know how, but, <laughs> how that reaction would go. But I think that brings up another point, and I, I think you're right. It's, it's tougher to go crazy with when you're continuing a story. Something that I think is a problem in video games is stories just go on too long. Like, so many series well, are, in their, are in their we, we fifth it. entry, it's sixth gone. entry, seventh entry, whatever it is. And sometimes, even if we really like things... I think it's better for them to end than to just eventually be disappointing, you know? Like, I love it when things wrap up. That's, like, Metal Gear Solid 4 is an ending, and I'm super pumped for Metal Gear Solid 5. It looks insane. I'm going to love that game. But there, at the same time, it's kind of like you keep ending this series and then making another one, you know? I, I, I appreciate it when games have the balls to wrap things up, even if it comes at a financial cost. I yeah, agree. and Uncharted 4 will get there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. It, it is the end. It'll be that one, hopefully. Uh, so I we can't had... get a Doc Brown spider monster out of my head. That's going to be exactly. that's gonna persist. Brandon, exactly. That's no, why... but that's not in a that's good way. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's no. such a good idea. No, you it's know not. It. Oh, man, but Kyle, it's then not. you have to commit to Doc Brown being a spider monster. Yeah, we figure that out later. <laughs> After we... Then it's, then it's just a gimmick. Then you're like, okay, then that's then that's a gimmick. Like there's no there's no way that Back to the Future Four could end up with him being a Spider Monster and me enjoy that film at all. Like that's where it no, starts. No, that's where it starts. And then it's like, well, well let's fix the timeline. Let's make sure Doc Brown like doesn't five turn months over. earlier. Yeah, and it's normal Doc Brown. No, no, no. It's like, not five oh, months I... earlier. No, it's like we have to team up with Spider Doc Brown to like fix the timelines. He's coming back to 1950 something. I'm so glad you don't write movies, Kyle. Oh, I'm boy. so glad, or you make trailers write. for that matter. <laughs> I'd watch it. Uh, we have... <laughs> Whether I'd watch it or not is not the question. <laughs> I'd be first in line to see that film. <laughs> they wouldn't need to release another trailer if it was him as a spider monster. I'm just saying. That's exactly if what If you I'm... wanted to take it seriously. 
Okay. Might not be the best choice. Uh, Project Cars, also uh, big delay news. Interesting about Project Cars, this is not its first delay. I'd At like all. to go through the delay timeline. Uh, oh, you got I them may. all listed out. Yep. Okay, so its re original release date was in November. In October... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh-oh. You can go back to the beginning. I'm pretty okay. sure that game is originally supposedly coming out in like 2012 or something. Whoa. Or 2013. So it's got a history. Yeah. But here's what's been happening recently within the last Originally it wasn't even planned for these consoles. It was planned for the previous consoles. Really? This was going to come out of Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3? Mm-hmm. Those little wimpy consoles? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah. It, That's how still, we have to refer to those. We like scrunch our noses when we say those console titles. Wii U is an 8th gen <laughs> console. Why would it not come to Wii U? What is it? It was planned for Wii U for pretty much from the start. Yeah, uh, it will come to Wii U later. These release dates we're about to talk about are not the Wii U release date. Okay, here we go. In October, it was delayed until March 20th. So, like, we're in October and we're expecting this game in November. Nope, sorry, I'm running this going to March 20th. In February... It was delayed to April 2nd. February was just last month. So I'm like, oh, fine, we'll wait till April. Then in March, it was delayed to mid-May 2015. That's where we stand today. Yeah, it's weird to delay a game like a couple of months. That's, that's weird. It's happened before. It's just weird to delay a couple months three times in a row. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the major question that I have is, was this, was, who's the guy's name that's putting cars together? Uh, Andy Tudor? Uh, it, was this his idea, or was this pressure from him? Is this him reporting to his superiors and being like, ah. Uh, well, he's the superior. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a Kickstarted, basically, this project. So there's no, so the buck yeah. stops Well, they him. crowdfunded it before Kickstarter was even on anyone's mind. So oh, yeah. cool. nobody pressuring him to get this done at a certain time. There's no board of directors he has to report his well, development the, to. The thousands of fans that have invested money right. and <laughs> development time into the game, yeah. I feel like something that's happening with alarming regularity with early access games and crowdfunded games is they get announced. There's a huge buzz around them. People are super excited. And then it goes away for a really long time. And they're like, here, play this thing for backers or play this early access version. A bunch of people play that. And then a year later, the game comes out and no one cares. And yeah. it's just interest just nosedives because we're at this point now the way games released is so weird where you sort of get your fill way before the game ever comes out. Like, I feel like I've seen Project Cars. I'm sure they're going to put a bunch more things in it, but it, they're having a really hard time maintaining just personally my interest. It's like... Can we talk about Hotline Miami 2 for a second? Yeah, Because that's absolutely. been delayed a that, lot. I had that in my mind, absolutely. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it was. That was a game that needed to be announced and then come out like a couple of months later. Yeah, right. I actually another thing about I played that game a year ago. Hotline Miami Two. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And so, do you feel Ben that today, like its there, its release feels something less than if it had launched a year ago? Yeah, because when Hotline Miami came out, it there was there was nothing quite like like it. It was just overflowing with style and there was this energy about it and that that built up a lot of goodwill especially when it came out on consoles and vita like a lot of people played that game and then when you announced hotline miami 2 everyone was really excited but it's been so long and in the trailers it just looks like more hotline miami it's not there's a lot of ambition there but that's a game that can't sell itself over years, you know what I mean? Oh, right. Like every time you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, I played that. Yeah, actually, yeah, if you go back to Grow Home, for instance, like they couldn't have had a long marketing cycle for that because in the one trailer, they showed most of the game, you know? It's, sure, and that was about a month, right? A month from announcement to release? It's about a week and a half between announcement wow. and release. Like, That's probably the right way to do it. When DayZ comes out on Steam, officially, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna play it. Yeah. I've already played so much heard so much about it, seen so many YouTube videos, like it's, it's done. I, I get it. It was very cool, but I'm, I'm over it. I get, I've moved on to other things. So how do we fix this? What do we tell Project Cars? Brandon, you're, the, you're, you're their new consultant. Do you even, should they have even said mid-May? Should they have just not 
like started a new target? Yeah, if you're gonna delay your game, and again, this I, I do not know. I have no experience in delaying a game and then seeing how that affects sales. So like, yeah. I have no idea the science behind like, uh, yeah, we can delay it, but we can only you know we can only do it a couple months. Just from looking at it. I get the sense that like he doesn't want to upset people, so he wants to give people good news every time it's delayed. But like, I remember feeling like like being like, oh my god, October is my favorite month, and a Batman game is coming out. I can't wait. And then it was just this swift, you know, punch to the gut where it's like, nope, summer. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. You know, it, I, you know, it was tough. I cried. I went into the corner and, and weeped a little bit, and then I came out and I was like, all right, I'm good. I can all. That's great. That'll be my summer game. I can focus on there's plenty of other awesome games that are coming out in October. And certainly when October hit, I was like, oh man, if Batman came out this month, I'd be in you know deep trouble. I wouldn't be able to play anything. So I, I think you just you you make the big delay. You basically take it's kind of like um, it's like every film I've ever been involved with. I, there's always like the director when I get on set and they're like, okay, um, we're looking to wrap up around five, and I'm like, okay, we'll be done at nine. Great. And they're like, no, 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 we're not done at nine, and we're done at nine. It happens every single time. Like it always goes later than you think it's going to. People are always like a little bit late. And it's like, you're, I can understand the need of, of you want to make everybody happy and being like, no, 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 I, we're, we're really working as fast as we can and we're really going to get you out at five. It's like, if you just say nine, you think I'm going to be upset because it's later, but I'm not because you're being more honest with me. Yeah. And you're just, you're just you're like either nine or we don't know. You know, it's like either do like either just say it's coming out whenever. I don't know. You know, and like I think there's like a fear of the fan base being like, well, then I'm out. You know, it's like, oh no, then it's clear to me that you're you're focusing more on the development of the game than how the weird math that's impossible to compute is going to add up to exactly when that game's going to come out. And so I think honesty is is the best thing. And you actually, I, I you know, in the notes for GT Time, you commented on how Druckmann handled. You know the, the the delay. How we like went out there and was like, okay, here's kind of what we're dealing with here. That this game is more complex than we realized. We are human beings. Yeah. This is a new console. We've never made a game for this console yet. We are discovering things. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you, and if you do like get into a pocket of development and realize like, oh wait, we can really just blow this huge environment up, or we can add this whole new thing. Well, we got to release in a couple months, so let's just not do that. It's like no, let's do it. You know, like this is yeah. it's Uncharted Four. This is the last game we're gonna make in this series. Let's take advantage of absolutely everything that we can do. And a huge delay. And a kind of like Batman, just yeah. like, this is a huge chunk. Yeah, and I think that's great. I think that's right. really smart. Again, just like you said, it, 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 or commenting on what you said earlier, it mentally, you know, you put that game on a, on a different shelf. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not gonna anticipate that. I'm not gonna keep checking in with DayZ and be like, where, where is this at? I know where it's at. I know it's not something that we should talk about. When I get a trailer, I'm gonna be very surprised. I'm not gonna be hitting reload every day, being like, when's that Uncharted 4 trailer coming out? We shouldn't expect that trailer for a while. You know, like if we don't see Uncharted 4 at E3, we're not gonna be shocked. You know, it'll be like, no, they just said it's, you know, it's 2016. So like the next E3, you know, that's when we'll get something or, you know. So I think just it's as far as you can push it, I think is smart. So I wanna talk about the other side of this, the underbelly, the dirty underbelly. <laughs> I wanna talk about intentionally announcing a game ahead of time to reap the reward of hype. Uh, particularly if you're a console. If you're Sony, and you say Uncharted 4 is coming this fall, you might get people to buy it, and then you might delay that game, and those people already bought their consoles. If you're, you know what I mean? Uh, do you think this happens? Do you think this is a true thing that exists? Absolutely. Do you think people like intentionally make unrealistic release dates in yeah. order to? Yes. I feel like I can provide very clear examples. I okay, I, well, I want the, some clear examples. Yeah. I think the clearest example to me is Gran Turismo PSP. <laughs> nice example. The yeah. first time the PSP was shown, they had Gran Turismo running on that system. Yep. There was no Gran Turismo game in development for that system. <laughs> there wasn't. But people bought the PSP thinking, yeah. yes, uh, Gran Turismo will someday be on this product. Yeah. yeah. And, and then when it eventually did come out, I don't know what the development timeline on it was, but it was very clearly rushed. It was not what fans expected out of that series. I feel... I'm not necessarily saying Sony is the most guilty of this, but all of the examples uh, are coming from them. We got shown Final Fantasy Versus 13 in 2006. Don't, don't get me started. Don't okay. even, okay. I'm, hold don't on. Even, no, hold no, 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 on. No, no. Get it? <laughs> that game wasn't even in development. In the year 2015, almost 10 years later, we still don't have it. Mm -hmm. Gran Turismo 5 was shown like very early in the PS3's life, we didn't get it to like what, five years later? Five, six years later, I don't know exactly what it was. Yeah. Last Guardian, it's just a joke now. Yeah. The Agent, 
that's nothing. <laughs> right. You know, like what, what is going on? But all those things, which is weird is like reinforce the purchaser's feelings about the console they've owned. Right. Like, oh, I love Sony because I love The Last Guardian. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, is because we love these things so much, yeah. we fall for it every time. Mm -hmm. Guys, realistically, we have no idea when we're getting Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, no, that's, no yeah, idea. Buying a console that doesn't make any sense to me. That's that's I, I I it's a really bad move as a journalist to say that somebody's making a poor consumer decision. But like that's that's a bonehead move to buy buy a console. Yes. Just so you're ready. It's like what that's that's like that's like buying like a ton of sweaters in like the summer because like this winter is gonna be crazy. It's like what are you doing? You but, know, like well they're cheap in the well, summer. Well, actually, yeah, no, that that, that, is, that is a good idea. <laughs> Maybe this Off is just season, exclusive like, to me, but I feel like. My love of certain things can blind my purchasing decisions, as is well documented on the site. I would not have a Wii U to this day if Nintendo hadn't shown off Bayonetta 2. Yeah. Like, I love Bayonetta 1 so much and was so unbelievably excited for that announcement. Instantly bought a Wii U after that. Just to, like, have it prepped? Just so, like... Like literally, like instead of the Wii U on your shelf, you saw her like staring at you. And In a weird like, way, Soon. it was as close as I could get to that game at the time was buying that console. I know because I've talked to him. There are people that bought a PS4 because Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming eventually, maybe. And I think it's really terrible that people do that. I think if your game does not come out within two years of you announcing it, you're, you're mean. <laughs> yeah, you're mean. Well, manipulative. I think actually Nintendo is good to bring up Super. They've done this all the time when the GameCube was announced, just showing <laughs> Link and Ganondorf fighting. That is the worst. Yeah, I mean, they did the same with Wii U. They showed Link with the fighting of Sweet Goma in HD. Because multiple times they're going to be like, oh, yeah, actually, we didn't want to make that. We're not going to yeah. tell you that we don't want to make that. We're going to sell this product. But, but yeah. they... But they <sighs> I, I, I can't remember for sure with the GameCube, but I, I for definitely for sure with the, the Wii U thing, they said that wasn't a game. Yeah, this is strictly a tech demo. We're just yeah. showing what our console is capable of, yeah. but you might but, see but something like this on it. Like, yeah, don't you think that's a little vague. unfair? A, as a tech demo to show Link and then show the items on the bottom of the screen? <laughs> I don't know, because it's like, uh, again, they, they were very clear and upfront, this is not an XL game. This, that one they were clear. Uh, so when they announced Brawl, Sakurai was not an aware that they were going to announce that game. <laughs> That's another example of just like, and Smash Brothers is coming to the Wii. It's like, hello, really? Am I directing it? Yes, you are. Okay. I'll Sometimes I, I feel yeah. like Sakurai is the saddest man in video games. Yeah, because he works so hard. Oh, man. He's so good. And then just, oh, they pu keep pulling him back in. I'm dying, but please enjoy. <laughs> right? He's like, no, his hands hurt. <laughs> his hands hurt. They hurt him to press buttons, and he's like, I will do it for you. But you know consoles are going to be cheaper. You know there's going to be some cool bundle. You know, it's like, why, mm -hmm. why spend more money on it now to not play games? Yeah. Like, there's a reason I didn't get a Wii U until later, because it was, like, there's just no game. And I'm like, I absolutely have to buy that game. And then the, then the time came. And yeah. I got a great bundle, and I got a bunch of cool games with it, and it worked out. You know, it's like, I don't understand. Yeah, that, that, that's weird to me. Like, yeah, when grabbing is, when that is, console uh, early. When is Street Fighter V actually happening, I wonder? I think it's spring of 2016. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, it's it's, it's not like yeah. a console is not like Amiibo where it's like, oh, but by the time you know Kingdom Hearts three does come out, oh, there's no more PS fours left. Sorry, you should have gotten one while you, well, while you, <laughs> while they were there. You know, it's like uh, it, it's it's gonna be there for you. You can go and get the PS four and Kingdom Hearts three at the same time and save money. But the way video games work, in a way, is the, it's it's hard, and I think the. The way that we're sold things is kind of depressing because you never want to be the person playing on an inferior system. Like, I'm not saying it's bad that people do this, but I feel like we're conditioned to believe, like, I don't want to be playing Destiny on a 360 or PS3. Oh, yeah. You know? We were I just mocking Project Cars. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. We, we are it's very nature. directly told that if we, if we play on less capable things, that we're not as good. I think, honestly, it's like even if you give two children who are five years old, like one a, a slice of cake that's 45 degrees and another a slice of cake that's 50, yeah. the one who feel, gets 45 degrees is going to be like, what am I doing? I hate this cake. We <laughs> said on this very podcast, the 360 and PS3 are wimpy consoles. Yes. I, you know? <laughs> yeah. That, that's what's in our brains. Yeah. And I don't know. What can be done? 
That was rhetorical. Don't, Brandon, do you know right. Don't, <laughs> don't not, feel the need to buy the console. Yeah, well, exactly. Don't buy a console if you know you're not going to play it's it. It's impossible not to feel that. I mean... Yeah. I've always bought a console for a game. I've always bought a console. I've never bought a console like right away because it's just like, eh. like the first console I bought in this gen was the Xbox One. I bought it for Dead Rising Three. Cool. I bought it because like I want to play that game. Sure. And, and I, I plugged it in and I put Dead Rising Three in and I played it for a little bit. Well, what you're saying makes sense. Right. I'm with you. <laughs> you're, it's probably the way to go. Right. But every, I will always buy a console on launch day because when I buy a console. There is a hope that I have. And it feels good. You know, sometimes sometimes certain things in the industry beat me down. They make mm -hmm. me sad. But when you say there's a new console coming, my hope is just completely reemerged. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll be disappointed. Maybe there won't be anything to play. But every time I buy that console on launch day, I'm feeling good. I'm not going to stop. I think you should start a new show called Illogical Purchasing <laughs> Decisions, hosted by Ben Moore. Oh, <laughs> man. Don't spend your money the way I do. I don't. Starring Ben Moore. Sure. <laughs> We'll talk about it. Uh, what I do want to talk about is uh, what our commenters want us to talk about. Okay. It's that time again. Well, you're the one who started this conversation. Whoa. Is that a ghost? You say that, that was that was our crowd going wild when you said that. <laughs> you said that in a way like it's just like, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Beatles. It sounded like, me like a ghost. I don't know. I think someone died. Uh, <laughs> This comes from Oliver, 241293. Hi guys, I'd like to know who your favorite video game developers are and why. This is one I'm actually curious about. Just oh. one, just one. I didn't look at these, just one developer. Okay. We do many, it's like, that's too long. All right, everybody gets one. Brandon, who is your one developer? Rockstar. Why Knew is, it. Why is Rockstar your favorite Rockstar. developer? Well, uh, to, to, to build on something we were talking about, they know how to advertise games. Sure. Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. They make, I mean, uh, everybody's upset about heists, but heists are free, so calm down. You know, it's like, you know, everyone's like, I should get heists now. And it's like, okay, based on what? Like, what has Rockstar done in their history that has indicated how heists should roll out? Well, what has anybody done that has indicated how this free mode for this, you know, 16, now 32 player online mode that no one's ever done, that's ridiculously ambitious. Again, it's just people getting impatient. Like, they announced that a really long time ago. Right. And so it gets, just gets to the point where you're wondering, like, hey, where are these heists at? But that's all they did. And then, and then the thing that's really funny that everybody says about heists is they're just like, they hyped this up so much. No, they didn't. You did. That's kind of true. It they was released like in interviews. one trailer yeah. that said heists are going to be a part of online. That's all they did. That's you it. Give, you give the Ooh. internet anything, and Wait, they'll run. When did they release that trailer? In the when the first thing that, that first online with like the British lady who's like, or okay. like the lady who's like, here's how online will work. Do I'm gonna say to that's a little left. Then. Do heists? I think that's a little left. That's, that's a, okay. That's but, like, but a little left. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little left because it is. It's selling a promise and then delaying that promise. It's like Master Chief Collection will work eventually. Just wait. But you're not, there's no money burning a hole in your wallet. You bought GTA V, mm -hmm. and then you own it, and it's great. You can put it on the shelf, and then you can get heist later. It's not like WoW or you know, some MMO that you're dumping but, money into, being like, why am I investing in this when I'm not getting the thing that they promised? It's, it's all about money. If you're losing money, you can argue. If you're not, what's the problem? Like, what, I don't just, understand that's what. That's just how people work. If you tell them something's coming, and then right. it's way longer than they expect, of course they're going to respond that way. Right. Even if it's not necessarily owed to them, that is how people work. I understand. Uh, I do want to talk about why Rockstar is so great, though. So the, <laughs> why, why Rockstar is great is because everything that they've done that isn't heists yeah. is uh, the antithesis of what we've been talking about with advertising and delays and stuff like that. Like, they, they announce something, and you're like, oh, that sounds cool, and then a couple months later, it happens. You know, yeah. it's, like when, it's like Nintendo at its best. You know, like when, they, when, when you get something and they let the hype level, you know, like people just hunger for Rockstar trailers so bad that like when it comes out, you have something like Assassin's Creed, anything Ubisoft does, they just barf trailers. You know, it's like there's like 50 trailers for, you know, Far Cry 4, and you're like, there's like three documentary series going off in the same time, you know, and it's just like, oh God, I can't, you know, I was already, you, you hit me at like the 30% point of your campaign and the rest of it's just like, I'm, just, I'm done. I, got, I already pre-ordered the game, just stop it. That's really funny, Rockstar could easily do documentary stuff. Yeah. And they don't. No. Yeah. They, 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 they're, they're not really invested in E3. Like, they really just do things the way they want to do it. Yeah. And, like, e like each of their games has, like, four trailers, and mm -hmm. then they're done. So, like, it's every single excellent. one of those is a huge deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and all of their games are awesome. Rockstar is yet to... Manhunt 2 is the only thing Rockstar and State of Emergency. Okay, I was just going to say State of Emergency. Are, like, the only things that they release that... Uh, That's two gens away now, though. Yeah. And, yeah. and I wouldn't... And even State of Emergency is not something where, like, I played it. I played it and was like, oh, okay, this is what this game was. I wasn't like... 
rock star. How dare you? Because again, like, not I didn't feel like like Grand Theft Auto slowed down in order to make State of Emergency happen. It felt like mm-hmm. just kind of an extra thing that they did. And uh, Manhunt Two was just I don't know, just didn't really care. I didn't need a sequel to that first one. Blood, who's your favorite developer and why? Oh goodness. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just pick somebody, but I won't, I won't necessarily call them my favorite. No, we but. need your favorite. I'm really sorry about this, Blood. <laughs> no. We can't compromise on this. Yeah, we're gonna compromise. <laughs> Anyways, um, but I'll I'll highlight uh, uh, CD Projekt Red because it's like that's your favorite. Just say CD Projekt Red is your favorite. No, I don't know. I I've think, heard you say I super think nice Nintendo, things about this. Nintendo team. might be my favorite, but uh, I think CD Projekt Red is interesting to, to because it's like there's. They still like operate so independently, but it's like they just fly in the face of like all of the the big publishers and, and, and the big names. And it's like, you know, it's like they look at Mass Effect and it's like that's what you call multiple endings. Look at what we're doing. And then you know, it's like, is, you guys are gonna like rip everybody off with DRM and, and DLC. It was like, well, we'll give everybody a bunch of free stuff with no DRM. And you know, it's like, and then like what you go to their like you go to see their demo at E3 and it's like. Hey, everyone, look in your bags. You have a copy of the game when it comes out. I was like, what? Why? Why did you do that? Nobody needed that. And like, it, it was funny, too, is because uh, like there was that moment in the E3 demo where like they you know, were like, it's the last demo of the day. So, if, you know, anyone wants free beer, you know, just raise your hand. And like, nobody thought they were serious. <laughs> One guy raises a hand. They bring out a beer. And then all of a sudden, the whole room is like, wait, what? And then they start raising their hands, too. And it's like they didn't coax everybody into the booth with free beer or anything. It was like, here, try it out. So you love CD Projekt Red because they gave you a free beer. Rockstar never I gave me free beer. I actually <laughs> didn't take the free beer because it was still working. But yeah, yeah. We and gotta, I had to drive right after that. Yeah. But um, straight back to the office. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, but no, it's just, it's that kind of thing where it's like they are very in tune with. They want to make the kind of game their fans are going to love, and they don't and they want to respect them as consumers instead of like you know oh. Give us more money and give us more money and give us more money. You know, like The Witcher 2, like the Enhanced Edition, they changed the last part of that game and added way more stuff, and they didn't charge anybody for it. If you'd already bought the game, you just got an upgrade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they just do things that are pretty cool. Yeah. Are they in Poland? Yeah. Cool. That's not easy to run a business out of Poland either, I imagine. I don't know. Who knows? Ben, who's your favorite <laughs> developer? Platinum Games. Nice Oh, not Blizzard. Yeah. Huh? Uh, what I love about Platinum... Is it is it's like they're they're in this own bubble. they it's, it's as if they're not aware of what the rest of the industry is doing, and every single time a platinum game is announced, I have no idea what it's going to be. You know they, they, you know they they make a game and it's like, hey, you play as a lady and she has gun on her feet, guns on her feet. What? You fight a senator infused with nano machines. This is Metal Gear now. Deal with it. <laughs> there is this confidence and yeah. bravado and energy that every time I play a Platinum game, I'm like, oh, other video games are way less exciting. I I get pumped up when I hear rules of nature. (laughs) And people call it cheesy or corny or dumb, Mm -hmm. but in the moment when you're slashing giant mechs and ripping robot spinal cores out of people, it feels amazing, and nothing else touches that for me. That's cool. That's a really good answer. Their games are about feel, I feel like, Mm -hmm. and and they, they nail that. Uh, my favorite is Naughty Dog. That's a good pick. <laughs> I was gonna pick Nintendo. Nintendo is actually like five different development studios. Yeah, that, that thing is a hard shady. thing. Is that like a lot of times, like you have to like really dig in. It's like who, which team is this? Yeah, so, like the guys making this Mario game made, you know, a different one, and and they made Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, and, but they're not the guys that made Mario sixty four. And yeah. right, uh, Naughty Dog is my favorite because of how much they've evolved. I think. From Crash Bandicoot and then just like Jack and Daxter games. Just their logo alone is really an impressive evolution. Yeah, just a logo. Man, where it started, that, that was goofy, ugly, like ugly, weird ugly, dog. Ugly logo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Sega, the, the Genesis games. Um, yeah, I like uh, I like where they're going. I like that, you know, to play like a to play Jack Three and then Uncharted. It's like, how did you do that? How'd you even evolve like that? You know, uh, maybe it's because they started in a weirder spot. But I respect where they've come to. Um, so thank you. Uh, I got another one actually. Here's another comment. This is from Big Jim Slade. Uh, GT needs to start a band called Blood on the Bass. No real uh, question, but man, like yes, we do. Well, we can't do it if, if you're not going to play bass when Rock Band Four yeah. comes out. <laughs> Any interest in the bass, Blood? 
I mean, yeah, I haven't, I haven't played much of it, but yeah. I, I basically, like, I did Guitar Hero 2, and that, that was that was about, about it. I just went back and played that one and got the itch. So we'll get Blood on the bass. I, That's <laughs> such a good band I feel name. like Blood is kind of like Guile's theme, in a way. Because every so often, someone will say, Oh, I've got it. I've got a perfect name for this. It should be Blood on the X. And yeah. it's always amazing. Right, yeah. <laughs> blood just point, goes with everything. We wanted to do something called Blood on the Tracks. No, yeah. we did that. We did Blood on the Tracks. Uh, is that not incredible? Uh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, Your yeah. Your name goes so well. It's with just a everything. fantastic name. I love it. Uh, let's do some closing bets. Next week, Final Fantasy Type Zero will be released along with the Final Fantasy XV demo. What I'm going to do it's the next way week. Around. The Final Fantasy XV demo will be released. <laughs> In addition to Type Zero, <laughs> depending on your perspective, absolutely. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to GameRankings.com. I'm going to look at the most recent seven reviews for Final Fantasy Type Zero. Hmm. How many times will I see the word 15? And when I say 15, I just mean XV. I don't. If it's spelled out 15, that does not count. I'm just Nobody's looking for XV. That, yeah. yeah. This just is to like if they say there are 15 levels, I'm not going to count it. Specifically, we're talking about. 15, XV, Blood. You may choose whether you want to go first or last. Um, I'll go last. Okay. Brandon. 15. We're going to hear 15, 15 times in seven reviews. 15, 15 times. Okay. That's a great bet. Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with six. Ben. I'm going to go with ten. Okay. Blood. What is your best? Two. Wow, you don't think? I don't know, Blood. Well, let me lock those in first. Okay. Um, I think it's gonna pop up a lot. I think reviewers can't help themselves when talking about Type Zero to talk about Fifteen. I just don't know that it'll actually make it into the reviews. Okay. I mean, you made your bet and you always win. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> last week's bet. Oh, I have to even like look up the results. I was too nervous. It's very close. So last week, uh, we uh. We wanted to look at the Metacritic, we never did this before, the Metacritic user score <laughs> for a game. Uh, the reason why is because the game we're looking at is DMC uh, Remastered. Definitive, Definitive edition. edition. Thank you, Brandon. To see if the user score would be better or worse than the PlayStation 3 version of this. That's, uh, that's one of those games on Ben's list of things he hasn't had time to play yet. You have to play uh, the Definitive? Do you have to review it? What are we doing with that? Probably a just played if but who knows? <laughs> that list is distressingly long. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to get long. Maybe, maybe stream it. I don't know. Uh, so while Metacritic slowly loads on my phone, maybe it's because this room is so padded, uh, let's uh, talk about what everybody bet the user score would be for DMC. Uh, there it is. Brandon, would you bring it up? Uh, Blood bet 6.8. He thought user would be kind of lukewarm on it. Brandon Jones bet 6. He said users would not like this game. Bossman bet 7.2. He said users would kind of like it. Huber bet 6.7. One beneath blood to, I guess, block blood off. Huber's a strategy gambler. Okay. And now Brandon's bringing it up. Brandon, do you want to do the meta score? The user score is 6.6. Oh, Huber. Huber won it. He took it away from you, blood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 6.6 6. even. Oh, yeah. That was wow. close. That was suspenseful. That was close. Can yeah, I tell you what it was close. last night? It was at 7 last night. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. Well. Which would have been a tiebreaker, and you know how I handle tiebreakers. I'm honestly a little glad the super seat gets another point. So that brings us to super seat 4. Bloodworth tied at the super seat, also with 4. Uh, Brandon Jones and myself tied with 1 point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this side of the table is not doing so well. We're not doing so great on this side of the if table. If we add our scores together, we still are in last place. <laughs> God, stop that. We're going to catch up. It's okay. <laughs> we, we made some smart bets today about Final Fantasy XV. Uh, so, Ben, what you've won, mm -hmm. because of Huber's uh, great betting skills, uh, you are allowed to promote any video you'd like and then also uh, sign us off. Every time I'm on the show, okay. I get to do this. Yeah. Uh, which I just think is funny. The video I want to promote is Ian and I were at GDC. I'm sorry, who is Ian? Ian is the guy. Well, he's usually. Uh, right there. Oh, there he Everyone is! Yeah. He's the guy with the crazy hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who that is. Okay. He's very into Dark Souls yep. and Bloodborne. Uh, we shot a very weird episode of Mandatory Update where I was actually the one behind the camera. 
everything was on autofocus. <laughs> Hijinks <laughs> ensued. That's bad. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's bad. Uh, I thought it was weird and funny, and people should check and it different. out. And different. And very different. Yeah. Uh, the words loops dog come up at one point. Loops dog. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm well, not going to explain that. You okay. got to watch the video. Man, it's your promotion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then, if you will, sign us off. Sign us off. Yeah. Okay. Look at that where, camera. This is where things get awkward. Is there anything in particular that I should say? You just got to talk about Twitter. You got to talk about how thankful you are to everyone who would bother to listen to us for an hour. And okay. then uh, you have to say that we'll be back here next week. Okay. Do I say all of our individual Twitters? It's or? really funny when people try to do that. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't. And spell okay. them, please. Do yeah. I just say my Twitter? Just no, you just say our Twitters are here, and then oh. they pop up on the screen. I'm sorry, okay. was it Ian? Ian takes care of it from there. Okay, well, thank you, Ian. Well, week by Twitters... week, this proves that no one watches this show on the GT staff. I just want to put that out there. That nobody. <laughs> every time it's like the end of the show, it's like, how does this show end? <laughs> what, what are we? <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> Basically proof positive. Ding. <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to be rude. Uh -huh. I don't I watch like, the show either. I, I like GT time. Yeah. I talk to you guys every day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to listen to you guys talk for an hour and a half. Right. Because I live GT time. I feel that. I feel okay. that same. Yeah. That's all that's all it is. It's GT I like the time show. all the time. I like I like the show. All right. <laughs> our Twitters are here. Thank you so much to listening to our, our wild ramblings. Some of us got a little bit emotional. And please check us out next week. I love towers. <laughs>